Good morning, Sean. How are you doing? Good. How are you, John? I'm good. I'm good. Um, just wondering, you've talked about scar tissue for a long time. I, I mean, maybe even from the first year. What do you think, how much do you feel that has helped prepare this team um, coming off, you know, a, a, a year from what happened last year? How much, how much more prepared do you think this team is based on the scar tissues developed from last year? Yeah. I mean, again, I, I can't emphasize it enough here, guys. It's, it's, it's a game. It's one game. And certain guys on our team this year weren't even on our team last year. So uh, we all learn. We always try and learn and, and embrace that growth mindset. Um, and I think if you do it right, it helps you. At the end of the day, our preparation for this game comes down to how well we prepare this week. Um, and one thing that jumped out, or is, do you expect Cole Beasley to practice uh, today or this week? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, I just got off the radio here, um, and I said the same thing. Cole Beasley, Diggs, uh, Isaiah, McKenzie. Uh, I've got to meet with our trainer here when I leave, and, and we'll see where they are, uh, all those guys today. And finally, with his with with Cole's status uncertain and and, and Diggs and McKenzie banged up. How how valuable is does John Brown become in the fact that he's healthy and rested? Yeah, very valuable. Like he always is um, when he's healthy and, and ready to go. And and uh, so we gotta we gotta you know play our best game of the year as a team this week. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Good morning, Sean. Um, you know Ed Oliver. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are now with his second year kind of regular season anyway in the books. I mean, obviously dealt with the injury early in the season seems to have come on really strong in the second half. What have you liked about his sophomore year and what do you think he still needs to, to work on? Well, I think he's going to be challenged this week. Um, you know, they, they've got a couple of first round picks up front and, and their interior offensive line does a great job. And, you know, I think, I think we're going to be challenged as a defense. Um, they, they like to set the line of scrimmage, and, uh, and Ed's going to be a big – he's going to play a big part for us up front on our defensive line. Is there any extra pressure on a guy like Ed who, you know, like you mentioned, was a first-round pick himself to perform in these big spots? No, no extra pressure. We've got 11 – he's got 10 other guys out there on the field with him, and, and that's, why we, that's why they call it a team game. And, and, uh, and so we expect him to go out and do his, his 111. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, good morning. Um, I suppose this question hovers a little bit in the territory that John Wara was in just a second ago, but Josh specifically yesterday talked about uh, the big difference from last year until now. Uh, I think he said the biggest reason yesterday was that, you know, you, you learn not to press. You learn not to try to do too much. And I guess I'm interested in your take on his growth and development from that standpoint. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, and I think you get better, whether it's playoff game or regular season game, Adam, uh, the more you play, the more you coach, the, the more experience you have. Um, but again, um, plays that we made last week aren't going to help us win this week. And, and uh, this is a very good football team uh, coming in here. And uh, it's an 11 win football team. And, and uh, you know, they beat in Green Bay. They beat Tennessee, um, a team we lost to, and, and so they're well coached. Um, so we've got to have a good week of practice and, and get ourselves ready to play our best football. And I guess my only follow up would be what does it mean to you and maybe the team to have a limited number of fans at this game? Yeah, I certainly appreciate it. Um, you know, again, hopefully we'll give them something to cheer about. And, and uh, you know, I think the connection in Western New York to, to the fan base and the Buffalo Bills fans across the world really is, is second to none. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, good morning. Good to see good morning, you. Sal. Hey, um, so you said something a few weeks ago that actually really resonated with me. And I don't know if you used the word on purpose, but use the word program. And you were talking about how, you know, what you and Brandon and the entire organization have built here is a program. And um, I don't think people realize in professional football, maybe about how much that can be, you know, a true, a program versus just a team. Can you expand on that a little bit? Like not just, you're not just a team, but you, what you build here is a program through four years that you guys have been together and why that's important. Well, I think there's a lot of, you know, sidewalk between where we've gone, where we've come from and where we are now. And then hopefully there's more sidewalk and, 
a runway in front of us here, Sal, in terms of the program and the, the organization and the vision for, for where we're trying to go. And, um, and so I think that's really what it boils down to is, is uh, you know, having a clear set of, of, of goals and, and, uh, and a vision for how you want to accomplish those goals. And, um, you know, I think people, that word specifically, um, you, you associate a lot with high school or college when seniors leave and freshmen rise and, you know, somebody leaves your coaching staff, let's say you bring somebody in and you just, everybody gets acclimated very quickly. How, how, how tough is that to build or, 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 do you, or is there always a different timeline, you know, to build something like that based on, based on where you've been? I think that's why you see the NFL the way it is, uh, year to year teams change and, and, uh, you know, sometimes your next year isn't as good as the year you just had. And, and so it's, it's a league that's built for parity and, um, and you have to continually farm and, and cultivate and, and, uh, and build and manage, uh, that culture and, and, and that program, uh, if you will. I, I enjoyed that word and, and I've, I've stolen it from you, using it for you guys. So thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Tom. Hi, Sean. Good morning. Uh, in regards to Stefan, was that something, uh, the injury that he's now dealing with that, that came up in last week's game, or is it something that he's been dealing with uh, longer than that? Yeah, it's just something that's come up, Jay. Uh, I couldn't say exactly when, maybe maybe in the game. Um, just something that, that had come up. Okay. And um, uh, on a different topic, just – how does your approach change, if it does at all, when, you know, th this team has embraced sort of the underdog role and tried to use that as motivation. You, you don't get to do that in this game. You're a healthy favorite. You're the, the second seed in the AFC. You're at home. Uh, does that change uh, your messaging to the team, uh, knowing that you don't get to rely on that uh, underdog role a as a motivator? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know Frank's using that. Um, to be honest with you and, and uh, you know they're an 11 win team with the hall of fame quarterback so uh, he, he's got to do what he's got to do and the thing we're focused on mostly is is uh is our quality of play uh, that's what it that's what it boils down to uh, and that's that's what we have to work hard at this week is to get ourselves ready to play our best football